Good morning, everyone. We extend a hearty welcome to you from the Abiding Faith Christian Church. And on behalf of our pastor, we extend a hearty welcome in love. As we are celebrating our Black History Month, you know, I thought of a great song for we can do uh, this morning. And I'm going to give you a little piece of that. Uh, one of the, we call him the godfather of gospel, William Dorsey, has wrote many songs that has blessed our hearts over the years, uh, being influenced by Fred Hammond, uh, Andre Krauss, uh, 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 many, many people have given him credit for what they have done. So this morning, I'm going to sing just a, one of the songs that's very dear to me that he wrote on behalf of our black history. When my way grows near, precious Lord, linger near when my life my light is almost gone. Hear my cry, hear my call. Oh, oh my hand, lest I fall, precious Lord, and, and lead me on, precious my hand lead me on let me stand I am tired I am weak I Amen. Thank you, Brother Moss. And we want the Lord to take our hands this morning and lead us on to guide us this day. And, and, and I just want to say good morning uh, to all of you. Pray that God will bless each and every one of you this morning. Um, this is the day the Lord has made, and we say that all the time. But do you take it uh, with an understanding? And it's so important. It is the day that he has made. And um, we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, this morning, I, I'm going to uh, I'll share a word, a sermon. Uh, it's entitled Born for Duty. Um, 
awakening to my spiritual obligation. And you can shorten it and just say, use me for your glory. Amen. So what a wonderful week it has been. And, and, and I guess uh, we want to thank God so much for the birth of, of new babies in the land, for our, our Dr. Muriel Gammons and, and, and uh, Minister Rick Rodney Gammons, new baby girl. Uh, thank God so much for her, as well as uh, two twins that were born to, um, uh, uh, let's see, Edwin's and Paulo Prophet. And uh, my niece gave birth, my great niece gave birth also uh, this week to um, a baby girl, but the, the prophets actually had twins, boy and a girl. But we're grateful for what God did for, uh, for, uh, for them and for, uh, for us as a body of Christ. It's, uh, like I say, a wonderful week it has been, and um, I guess you need to start looking at things uh, a little differently. And sometimes what we do, we, we carry our burdens, and um, uh, we feel that We've got to carry this burden. No, you don't. You don't have to carry that burden. Uh, life should be enjoyable. Amen. I know we hit some bumps in the road and, um, you know, pitfalls and things of that nature. But don't make that your life, um, that particular blemish or um, whatever you ran into. That's not your life. Don't let that consume you. Amen. So I, I, we'll talk a little more about some of those things. But let's pray first. Let's pray. Father God, we bless you, we praise you, we, we do magnify you, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Should there be any pitfalls or uh, stubborn obstacles in our way today, uh, Lord, things that have plagued our minds, I pray that you would move everything that's not like you, everything that will not lead to our spiritual growth and advancement. Everything that interrupts now, Lord, with the flow of the spirit, the vision that you have already ordained for us. I pray, God, that you move against it in the name of Jesus. But bless us this day, O oh Father, that we won't always carry burdens this morning and we won't always live out those burdens. But God will be able to uh, be free in you and be free now, Lord, to discover the men and the women, O oh God, that you have called us to be. We bless you this morning. Stretch forth your hands upon those that are sick this morning. My God, I pray that you stretch forth your hands upon uh, Elder Regina Fleming this morning. Uh, our prayer now, Lord, is that you will awaken her in the name of Jesus. Awaken her. Awaken her, Lord, today. Uh, we bless you. We praise you. And we pray, God, you keep moving by your spirit for for. Uh, the family, for Reverend Fleming and for his sons. God, we're so grateful. We are so thankful, oh God, that you have called us uh, to this ministry, to this work of God, to help those that are in need. So, Father, we pray you tear down all of the things that the enemy has put up, every stronghold destroyed in the name of Jesus. Build us up. Make us strong, a, a stronger people. We bless you today, oh God. We pray now, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to take over and take control. The, the ministering angels to come and, and help me minister today. I bless you, oh Father. Look on your people. Those that may be sick among us. Touch their bodies. Revive them, oh God. Restore them, oh God. Bring forth the miracles, oh Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus. And this uh, virus that has has hurt and, and, and crippled and, and done so much damage. Drive it away, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. I, I call it by name COVID. I pray that you would move it far from us in the name of Jesus. We bless you, oh Father. And we pray now, Lord, that you will keep your hands upon us. We're so grateful, oh God, to be in your presence, to love now, Lord, you, to thank you so much for all that you have done for us. And if you're in your living rooms, your dining rooms, wherever you might be um, sitting, I just want you to lift up those hands and give God a praise, a, a thanks. Grateful that you are in the land of the living. So thankful that he has preserved your life. I, I just want you to reverence the Lord Jesus right now and, and, and bless his holy name for all that he has done for you, wherever you might be, amen, uh, just give God a praise from your heart and from your spirit today. 
Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise today. And I pray that God would consecrate us and and sanctify us even now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. God is good, church. He is good. And I pray that God will go beyond all of my prayers. Amen. And, and make the difference in my life. Before we move any further, let me share uh, something uh, black history. Uh, this is Matthew Henson, uh, 1866 to 1955. He was an explorer. The chapter on Matthew Henson and Admiral uh, Robert Perry and their North Pole expedition is all but closed without a final conclusion as to whether the team made it to the North Pole. Or did Henson make it without Perry? Much investigation has been conducted, but we may never know what actually occurred, although Perry was given full honors as it, it was given full honors as if his quest had been successful. His trusted, indispensable partner was not honored until after his death. The National Geographic's examination of Perry's diary revealed many inconsistencies and raised many questions. Editor William E. Garrett stated that Perry was curiously unexcited on uh, April 6, 1909, when he recorded the team's position as 90 degrees north. On the other hand, Henson, in his autobiography, biography said that Perry was pulled on a dog sled the last 133 miles because his toes were badly frostbitten. Henson reached the spot 45 minutes before Perry and said that upon offering a hand of congratulations, the admiral refused to shake it. Perry being white, Henson being black. The man whom Perry said had said was more of an Eskimo than some of them, for some reason now was ignored. Henson stated that Perry did not speak to him um, for years afterwards. Perry's disappointment could be attributed to his team not actually making it to the pole or his not making it before Henson. We may never be absolutely sure. Exactly six, exactly 79 years uh, to the day after Henson planted the American flag on the North Pole, the Arctic explorer's remains and those of his wife, Lucy, were reiterated with full military honors uh, at, the Nas- at the Arlington National Cemetery. And both Harry, uh, Perry and Henson fathered sons with the uh, indigenous uh, women in the North Pole. Amen. Born last days apart, born just a day's apart. So that's, that's Matthew Henson, an explorer who planted that uh, flag at the North Pole, uh, African-American. Amen. We praise God for, uh, for Brother Henson. But let's move on uh, to the word of God. I have a scripture down here. I uh, didn't give you the Psalms 34. And we know this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And that scripture invites you. It says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. We need to celebrate together, church. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. Do we understand what it really means to seek the Lord? I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. When I seek the Lord, I go after him. I want something that he can give me. I sought the Lord and he delivered me from all of my fears. When you have purpose in your heart to seek the Lord, go after him with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. You will not be disappointed, sought the Lord. Some 45 years ago, he heard me and he delivered me from my sins. I want you to just magnify the Lord with me this morning. I want you, I want you to uh, glorify God with me today. Amen. 
So to, today, as I said, I, I'm talking about I'm born for duty I, and, and I'm awakening to my spiritual obligation. What does that mean? I, I believe that I, have, I, I am able to accept or stand up uh, to, and take responsibility. And my duty as a man of God, as a preacher, born to duty and you. Some of you are born to duty. There's an obligation. There's a responsibility that you need to stand up to and do what God called you to do. Amen. And you want to do it gladly. You want to do it with, with a whole heart. And you want to do it with the joy of the Lord on the inside. And I praise God. Um, winning souls and, and being obligated to preach the gospel, it, it's not a burden. It's not a chore. It's not a woe. It's me. I, I thank God so much that he called me to do this. So I'm awakened to my spiritual obligation. And I want God to, uh, to use me for his glory. Amen. And, and how many people believe that you were born for, for whatever God has called you to do? Praise the Lord. I want to share with you something that, uh, that, that came across um, um, my mind and, and, and my heart uh, maybe day before yesterday by Harold Melvin, Melvin and the Blue Notes. So hold on. All right. Don't, 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 don't think anymore. But I want you to listen to the message. Amen. Some of you remember Harold Melvin, Melvin and the Blue Notes. All right. And you may start singing this song because you know the words. But it says, wake up, everybody. No more sleeping in bed. No more backward thinking time uh, for thinking ahead. The world has changed so very much from what it used to be. So there is so much hatred, war, and poverty. Harold Melvin, and um, they wrote this song back in 1975. There is so much hatred, war, and, and poverty. It's prophetic, church. It says, wake up all the teachers, time to teach a new way. Maybe then they'll listen to what you have to say. Cause they're the ones who's coming up and the world is in their hands. When you teach the children, teach them the best that you can. The world won't get no better if, if we just let it be. The world won't get no better. We got to change it. Yea, just you and me. So wake up all the doctors. Make the old people well. They're the ones who suffer and who catch all the hell. But they don't have so very long before the judgment day. So won't you make them happy before they pass away? Wake up all the builders Time to build a new land. I know we can do it if we all lend a hand. The only thing we have to do is put it in our mind. Surely things will work out. They do every time. The only thing we have to do is put it in our mind. So when I heard this song, or re remember this song, wake up everybody. It's not so much a one person uh, obligation, but collectively we work together for the good of all, amen? And, and, and this is important that we see ourselves working to include others in our future, praise God. So that song just spoke to me Wake up, everybody, and you see the things that are happening right now. We don't have time for this backward thinking. We've got to move forward in our thoughts as we uh, pray for America, as we pray for the United States. I mean, all of the families, everybody. I mean, it's just a whole lot of stuff that shouldn't be. 1975, and look at where we are in 2021, dealing with the same things that we dealt with in 1975. It's time for a change. Amen. It's time for a change. I want to read something to you, and this is a scripture um, from, where's that scripture? Is that message? Oh, 
I might have left it on the side over there. Well, let me let me read this to you. It's from the from the Message Bible. Oh, here it is. Excuse me. This is from the Message Bible. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through the 23rd verse. And, and what it does, it talks about how Paul's commitment is uh, to people. And that's why I said that, that, that this has to be um, uh, for you awakening your spiritual obligation. But this is, this is what Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians 9. He says, and, and this is from the Message Bible, for even though I am free of the demands and expectations of everyone, I have voluntarily become a servant to any and all in order to reach the wide range of people. Servant is so important because we can't just designate ourselves for one group of people. But as he says, he says, I am a servant to reach a wide range of people, religious, non-religious, meticulous, moralist, loose living, immoralist, the defeated, the demoralized, whoever. I didn't take on their way of life. I kept my bearings in Christ, but I entered their world and tried to experience things from their point of view. I become just about every sort of servant there is in my attempts to lead those I meet into a God-saved life. I have kept my bearings. That means that he didn't compromise. I've entered their world and I've tried to experience things from their point of view. Sometimes you have to see it from their eyes, from their point of view. I become just about every sort of servant there is in my attempt to lead some or to lead those I meet into a God saved life. I did all this because of the message. I didn't just want to talk about it. I wanted to be in on it. Didn't want to just talk about it. He talks about his commitment. Um, yeah, born uh, spiritual obligation, but how this is upon him um, and the demand upon him to reach a wide range of people. Amen. And this is so important, church. And so I, I like that because that's the mindset that we all should have. So when you think about it, we are born for this, this, this spiritual obligation, wherever you are, whatever you do. And there are people that you have to reach. You can't be exclusively just set on working with just people that look like you. Praise God. So open yourselves up. Open yourselves up. We kept talking about discipline yesterday in our leaders meeting, and I, I'm going to go back to something that I heard Bishop say, and this is really important, uh, from 1 Timothy uh, 4, chapter the eighth, verse, 7 through the 8th verse. And it says this, do not waste time arguing over godless ideas, old wives' tales. Instead, train, discipline yourself to be godly. Now, we talked about this at the very beginning of the year, but it still comes back into play. And, and, and we would say this, whenever God has to repeat something to you, all right, and, and bring it back to your, ten, or your attention, it's a threat right now. And he's got to bring it back again and again. Why? Because something we did not adhere to or catch. So what, what, what Paul is telling Sim Timothy, he said, train yourself or discipline yourself to be godly. We may fall short, all right, but we want to be godly. Let me say this. I said this on the radio this morning. Godly people are not fussing and fighting and arguing day in and day out. That's not godly. That's un an ungodly person. You can't claim to be godly and you carry something in your heart and you're mad or you're bickering or you're arguing six days a week and seven days you want to get yourself and say, I'm holy right now. No, 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 no. We're talking about 24-7 godly. So he said, train yourself. Six days, no, seven days a week. 
Train yourself to be godly, to be compassionate, to be loving, to be kind, to speak, amen, respectfully to one another. Train yourself to be godly. He said physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better. Promising benefits right now by being godly. In the life to come, but let's deal with it here and now by being godly. Even the Bible even talks about if you want friends and you want to be godly, right? You want friends. You have to show yourself friendly. All of that is godly. All of that is godly. All of that is important. Amen. Promising benefits and the ones that come. We talk about the importance of discipline, but I can see how discipline helps us to serve. We talk about with the reverence of God. You see, when I discipline my ways, I'm training my ways, my actions, intentions must all point towards God. Godly character should all point where towards God training yourself. This is my obligation. And I and, you know, I I want to win souls. I want to touch lives. And I believe it, it is my duty to get myself together. So I don't want to misrepresent Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and do one thing, say one thing and do something different. I'm training myself. And let's say this, church. Training is, is, is as we learned yesterday, it's ongoing. It, it, it's not a hidden miss. You can't jump into training and, and, and then, you know, take time off. And you're talking about being constant and, and, and you're talking about being steadfast, fast. You're talking about uh, uh, carrying forth uh, all the time. You're, you're training because you want to be the best husband. You're training. You want to be the best wife. You're training. Children, you want to be the best that you can be. You are training. Amen. And you have to work at it all the time. Praise God. Wake up, everybody. Amen. Wake up, everybody. So as we talk a little more, um, I, I must give myself to the full of cause of Christ and giving myself to Jesus. I must always remember this. It is not about me. When I'm talking about training, my ways, my actions, pointing towards God. All right. It's not about me. Uh, and, and that's out the window. But remind yourself you're training uh, to glorify God. So, Lord, help me to reach those who are lost, left out, thrown away for the glory of God. It's not about you, but it's for those that God has called us to to reach out to. This is something that he said to Timothy um, in, in 1 Timothy 4 and 12. He said this, and this is why it's so important that we we, we take that that inventory, how we we carry ourselves. This is from the New Living Translation. It says, don't let anyone think less of you. Because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, in your faith, and in your purity. That means that free from immorality, especially of sexual nature. All right? Purity. All right? Believers, carry yourselves how you live, your love, your faith, and impurity. Why was this so important? Um, for Timothy to be an example, you know, why is it so important that we, we live a certain way? We carry ourselves a certain way. Why is this so important? What was the purpose behind him training to be godly? It served a purpose in glorifying God, but it also made a firm impression on the man or woman who did not have a God on their side. Oh, oh, no, no, no. God's not trying to uh, cramp your life. He's trying to give you some style. All right. Uh, yeah, people say, well, you know, God told me I can't do this. I can't do that. No, he's trying to add value to your life. Not for you, but for those that he's trying to make an impression to win them over uh, to the kingdom of God. How you carry yourself is all about Christ. We represent the kingdom in everything we do and, and participate in. The young people, young people, you represent your parents uh, every time you step foot out of that door. For all of those, we represent someone 
and how we carry ourselves. But church, when it doesn't go according to how God wants it to go, we can throw things off. In 1 Corinthians, Paul had to address the church. And I'm just going to give you a part of this um, in uh, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 28. And it reads, and the here it is. First Corinthians. I'm sorry, Romans, 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 excuse me. Romans 128. It says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to debased mind. Now I want you to go back and think about this. All right. For everybody that sometimes says, you know, um, you're trying to force things on me and all the other things. Um, that's 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 not a, a discussion. We don't want to talk about people trying to force. We're trying to persuade you to understand what what God is all about. So as he's dealing with the people and we're talking about people that are in church. But this is what happened. They did not like to return, retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a debased mind to do the things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God. This, this is what happens when you don't retain God in your mind. So there is what you might say, um, a well, there's a there's a problem, but uh, when you don't retain God, it, it, it can cost you. All right. It can cost you. And so while we talk about my obligation and, and, and this is what God has called me, he's called me to people just like this. Those that I think they're all right when in actuality they're not. They didn't retain God. They didn't like to retain God in their knowledge. And he turned them over to a debased mind to do the things which were not fitting or convenient. And they then became all the proud bolsters and vendors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. This is why I am born of duty to help the those that may feel like, OK, I'm doing this. I'm going to stay right here. I like what people do when they do those type of things. No, God doesn't want that type of lifestyle. So as as men and women of God who practice our faith, who live our faith, who have disciplined ourselves for for godliness and that we might be a benefit to those that may have lost their way for those that have not retained God in their minds. It can be costly. Amen. It can be costly church. So awaken to your spiritual obligation. Awaken to your spiritual obligation and see where God wants you to be in terms of helping people. I read something by Francis Bacon, uh, a famous philosopher, and he said, reading makes a full man. And I'm going to share why this is so important. You know, um, he said, imagine your conscience or your mind as a bucket. All right. Reading makes a full man. You want to fill your minds, your thoughts with so many positive things. All right. To make yourself full and ready uh, to help and, and assist those that are in need. I wrote a little message down earlier um, for, for all of those that are, are parents. Um, in, in parents, we have an obligation to our children, but reading will make those children uh, full individuals. And you know what? It's not going to just drop on them, but it's going to be something that we have to work with them on 
for them to develop into who God wants them to be. If you are not spending time with, with, with your children, I mean, we're talking about a lot of time. What do you expect for them to gain if your time is not their time? So you have to devote a lot of time to your children. Reading will make them full. It will make them um, um, able to uh, rightly divide those things that they will grow into and come into in life. That's, that's something that you, you want to pay attention to that. You want to pay. We don't want to leave any children behind. I wanted to segue into that to let you know how important it is. But reading will make that child um, a ready person. All right. And, and we want them to be ready at all times. This morning, I, I, I talked about a born for duty, um, awakening to my, my spiritual obligation. And I really want to do what I do for the glory of God. If you are not currently working and putting the time in that you need to put in with those that God has called you to work with, let's change that. Let's make it our obligation, our duty, so that we can what? Make sure that those kids are not left behind or whoever God has called us to. You're going to have to be willing to, to do this now. Uh, it's not something that God will force you to do, but you got to be willing. All right. You don't want to say, well, I, I'm just going to find somebody else to do it for me. That's what we keep doing. We keep passing it to somebody else. It's your responsibility. Don't blame it on anybody else. It's yours. Amen. I had to learn the hard way by not doing some of the things I, I could have done and should have done. So my message to you, take the time and do it now. I'm learning now how important it is for me to put um, my life into the lives of others in their, in their welfare. I'll, I'll find mine. I'm learning how important it is, the, 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 the obligation, the duty to give of myself for the cause of Christ so that others can be helped. And we got to make sure we, we, we do it. We don't want time to elapse and pass and, and then you run like you, you're going to try to trying to play play catch up in it at 15 and 16 it, it's a little too late sometimes to do the things that you could have done at seven and eight nine and ten amen make sure we do this church paul said i want to become everything i can to all because i, I i'm i'm working um, to establish something inside of them Make it your duty to establish something inside of someone that will be productive. In this case, we're talking about salvation, but we're also talking about things that will carry you for the rest of your days. That's your duty. That's your obligation. And you want to do it for the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Born for duty. Your spiritual obligation Born for duty, your spiritual obligation. Wake up, everybody. We can't just take time off. As we said so many times, we don't want to go backwards. This pandemic has taught us a whole lot. And if we haven't drawn closer to God through and during this uh, wilderness experience and where we have had to, to, to get through or, or, or where we are. If we haven't learned, we are more than likely going to repeat and go back into that bondage. Not for me. I don't want it for you either. Wake up, everybody. We've got work to do. Amen. And what this, so that, that song says, we've got to put it in our mind. Out of mind. All right. Out of sight, out of mind. Put it in your mind that you are going to apply yourself and, and, and put yourself right in the way to help somebody else. Praise God. Make it your duty. Make it your obligation to be of service uh, to help somebody else. I know God can. I know God uh, and, and he can help you, but you've got to be willing and obedient. You've got to be willing and obedient. It's going to take some time. But are you ready? Are you willing? And do you want to? Amen.
discipline yourself. Train yourself. Pray. Pray that God will keep you uh, as a good soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. Born for duty. Awakening to my spiritual obligation. I saw this last night about one o'clock in the morning when I called all the way over uh, to Texas. Text somebody in Texas just to check on them. And he said, it's so, it's so it, 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 it must be God talking uh, or trying to get my attention. Something that he had not seen about himself. He said, everybody says, I'm this way, I'm this way. I don't see it. And sometimes we're the last ones to see what's wrong with us. But when somebody else tells you that this is your problem, pay attention to them. Sit down and, and think about it. And as I, I, I shared and, and helped that, that young man to help him to see um, himself as well, but to, to bring him to a place where he wants to do something about where he is. And that's the whole, that's my whole job right now. I want to bring you to a place where you can see where you need to do something about where you are right now with your life. And God is looking for results in all of our lives. Praise God. I know he is. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you and we praise you today. Born for duty. This is our spiritual obligation, O oh God, to, to give of ourselves for the cause of Christ so that others can be helped. And Lord, we don't want anyone uh, to be turned over to um, a mind now, Lord, that will be filled with things that are, are not fitting. So we pray that you would now, Lord, get our attention today. Awaken us this morning, O oh God, so we can hear your voice and know exactly what you've called us to do. I bind the hands of the devil that comes to trap your people. I bind the hands of the devil that comes to pull us backwards, O oh Lord. I pray for the servants of God, those that you have called into duty to be workers now, Lord, and to give the very best that they can for the cause of those that are lost and for those that are struggling, and for those that have given up on themselves. I call on you now, Lord, to strengthen every man, every woman who has a calling in their, on their lives to do the will of God, the work of God, with all their heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. Bless us today, O oh Lord. Bless us now, Lord, so we will think about someone else. Bless us, O day, today, O Lord. Bless those parents, O Father, so that they can be ready now, Lord, to equip the children with everything that they need. Bringing them up now, Lord, to the place that they need to be. Not neglecting the children, not putting them aside. Bring them up this day, O Lord, and strengthen them on the inside. If they've become a little tired, a little weary, and they've given up, O Lord, replenish restore encourage them oh god that the best is yet to come even in their children oh lord we praise you oh lord and we thank you today lord help us to make this a, a part of what we will do every day to help someone that's in need oh lord we bless you today and we praise you right now lord stir us up oh god Stir us up as a church so that we won't lose our focus and we won't lose the vision and we will walk in our calling. Stir us up, O oh Father. We give you glory this day and we give you praise, O oh Father. I pray for men and women that are incarcerated in prison. I, I pray that you would look on them and, and help them this day, O oh Lord. I pray for us as a church that we will never lose our thrust, our zeal, our desire to see souls saved and set free. Bless us this day, O oh Lord. Sanctify every home, every house, a household that's represented today and lend yourself to them, Jesus. Bless them in a big way, in a special way. And I pray, Lord, that we now, Lord, will be stirred in our obligations and our duty in the kingdom of God, I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wake up, everybody. I pray that you will consider the message. Realize that there is so much work to do. And the work of God is never done. The work of God is never done. 
So we've got souls to save, lives to change. Amen. Praise God. You can go back and read that entire Romans 1 um, chapter. I just went to that, that 28th verse, but go back and read the entire scripture. And so we're dealing with people that have, um, have all the, the spiritual um, uh, where about or the, the uh, say the spiritual understanding. They can, do, they can do the right things. They just chose to do something different. And um, it's costly. It's costly. So try to stick to the script, the, the holy word of God. Amen. Praise God. And, and if you like to bless the Lord in your giving today, I, I want you to bless the Lord in your giving. Wake up, everybody. It's time that we put it in our mind to be of service uh, to the kingdom of God in our giving and our giving. Um, give your tithe, give your offering. Go to our website, abidingfaithcc.org and give. Um, that tithe and that offering, give your best today. And I pray God will bless you in your giving. Will a man, a woman rob God? Yet you have robbed me in tithes and offerings. Some people want God to continue blessing them when and they don't even see where they have fallen short in their giving. How is it that you seek God's hand and not his heart? You want him to give, but you never give back. You never Thank him 10% of what you have been blessed with. How is it that you want so much, but you give so little? Think about it, church. I know that God will bless you. I'm a living witness that when you give, God will bless you. Amen. I don't lack for anything. That's because I learned early how to give and uh, according to scripture. And I thank God so much. So let that be a part of your your understanding, your comprehension. Learn to do well. Praise God. Um, amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. God bless you and enjoy uh, the people that God has put in your life. Amen.